Okay, so to your business, more specifically, what is the grid? I'm going to speed right through these because I think about this a lot. I think about the electric grid, what it means, where it is, what is it? Electric sales in the United States alone are $500 billion per year. Globally, they're 10 times that number, $5 trillion a year. It's our most important physical network, and it fuels all of our most critical networks. World's largest machine, 6.1 million miles of wire. What is it? It's, as I said, biggest and most important network. These are the RTOs. These are the diff this is a different look at the RTOs, right? Kaiso ERCOT. Of course, ERCOT is isolated. We're in ERCOT today. Uh, another look at the different parts of the RTOs and how it, does the grid work? Well, it works increasingly on natural gas. So the natural gas pipelines are part of the electric grid. I'll come back to that. So are the railroads. We don't talk about coal much. Our coal use is declining, but we live on a grid that depends on coal for uh, resilience and affordability. And we are closing our coal plants at a breakneck rate, and I think it is a big, big mistake. So the railroads are part of the grid. So are, of course, all the distribution and transmission wires. And this is a FEMA map, you know, screen grab of their different uh, high voltage lines. I'll come back to that. It's also co-ops. I'm all in for co-ops. I'm all in for public power. I love the investor-owned utilities. But the cooperatives in America are a remnant, a living remnant of the New Deal. So are many of the public power agencies. I live in Austin. We're, Austin Energy is a city-owned utility. We're in San Antonio, city public service, another city-owned utility. Having public ownership of these assets, I think, is critically important. Not bad-mouthing the investor-owned utilities. They play their role. I'll come back to that. So it's RTOs, it's cooperatives, it's investor-owned utilities. I just talked about them. It's also the community-owned utilities, two, more than 2,000 of them. And it is all spread among 1.25 terawatts of generation capacity, 1,250 gigawatts, 1 million megawatts, 1.25 million megawatts. It is an enormous amount of generation capacity, and you can see the generation capacity by fuel but it's also diffused ownership. And this is the part, I was talking with Mark about it, and Marina as well, and Tom Dietrich and I had, had coffee in Austin in August. It's a marvel that all of this works. I mean truly. I was in Japan earlier this year. They have 11 utilities, or 10 utilities, for 100 million people. We have 3,000. 3,000, almost 3,400. The co-ops, almost 900. I won't read those numbers to you. The numbers in, in red are their percentage of the sales, right? The IOUs sell about half of the power. But it doesn't mean that they, we can dispense with the co-ops or the publicly owned utilities, even though their ownership is fractions of what the investor owns do, because why has it, it developed this way? Partly the result of insult, right? Partly the result of the Public Utility Holding Company Act and the Rural Electrification Act of 1935 and 1936, respectively. So the grid that we have in America is a reflection of that history, which is still important today.